Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. And actually in this video, we're going to discuss a little bit about this scene. So this is an open scene video. Uh, and then I'm going to show you uh, all the details of this scene, how I made it, uh, what I have used, and also some tips and tricks to work with uh, exteriors. So before we jump into the scene, I just want to remind you guys that the promotion of my course that I launched um, a few days ago, the new class uh, for this year, is going to end on Friday, this Friday, and the course is now 33% off. So if you still want to um, go into Blender Octane and learn everything about interiors, now is your chance. So I'm going to just open it up. Here are some images from the course. So these, um, these images are the ones that you are going to texture uh, from scratch, also light from scratch. And also you're going to learn how to place uh, the camera correctly. So this is uh, one big point here. And you're going to learn different moods as well. So like night mood, uh the daylight mood overcast how to use lights and this is like actually these images are like the final uh project for this course but the entire course is all about fundamentals so you're going to learn um about lights so not just how to use lights uh in the interior scenes but also how to manipulate lights uh in any way so this is uh, one big point. Also textures, you're going to, to learn how to texture uh, most of the objects that you need for, for interiors. And also you're going to learn a lot about Octane because this course has more than 80 videos. Um, so it's huge. Okay, so uh, stay tuned and don't miss your chance. So it's going to end this Friday, okay? So let's go back and jump into the open scene and see how I made that. Okay, so here it is. So this scene's huge scene, uh, thousands and thousands of polygons. Um, also, um, some people ask me why this scene is like rendering so fast because it took me around five minutes uh, to render it in 4K. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks about it as well. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to pass through the entire assets that I place into this scene. Okay, so let's get started talking about the scatter add-on. So this tool here, it's a huge tool for exteriors. So I don't know, like um, most of you guys, I don't know if uh if you have uh ever worked with 3ds max but this tool here it's very similar um uh, to forest pack from uh, from 3ds max and you can do like wherever you want you have like a lot of possibilities uh it's a little complex because there are a lot of different parameters that you can change but don't be afraid uh definitely it's going to to be your second hand for that for like any kind of um exteriors okay, so i'm gonna render this image just um for you guys to see like how fast it is um as you can see like it's loading very fast and it's rendering very fast even like in the viewport and also i recorded this video using using this software OBS that's taking part of my memory, my VRAM, and also taking part, taking some part of my GPU. Um, and it's still like rendering fast. And at the end, like when I finished this, this scene, I rendered it in 4K, so it took me five minutes. And this is very impressive. Um, Octane actually is very like fast comparing to other softwares. So um, I think the first thing here that we are going to discuss is the layers that I have used to compose this scene. So the layers I've, I've used uh, in Scatter, uh, 
are those are these ones here so stone house i have like some stones around here i'm going to actually turn off everything and then i'm going to turn on uh separately so you can see it easier okay so let's take a look here uh what i have here i have a um uh the first layer is like the stone house this layer actually actually uh it's quite impossible to see because the the camera is a little um downwards and you can uh actually see the the stones around the house right so for i was planning like to to create new camera angles uh so these stones would would help me to enhance uh the shots okay so uh again it's not like it's not visible in the camera for now but then i have like the trees and here there is uh, one thing that's important let me show you here and the thing here is that you can uh, change for example um the visualization of the trees you are using just for the viewport not to be extremely um heavy and it's still like a little heavy as you can see it's like uh it's cutting out sometimes but comparing how it was uh it was like quite impossible to um turn around or manipulate the, the viewport in blender so what i have done here actually scatter has this um display as so you can like select any kind of um geometry that's going to display um replacing the object that you are scatting okay so this is pretty cool um and this helps a lot uh to improve performance on the viewport so the same thing uh i have done oops for the trees number two so i have two kinds of trees um these two kinds of trees um they are actually those trees are from evermotion so i got them from evermotion i have actually a pack of trees from evermotion that my company my company used uh when we were working with 3ds max in the past and we had to convert everything to blender so now i have like my entire library from 3ds max now in blender uh thanks to the script we developed to convert everything uh and talking about that um the script that converts my uh, 3ds max um actually not 3ds max but uh cycles uh objects to octane objects is available uh in the course that i launch so the students uh, are the first ones to to have it so this is a pretty cool um the script and definitely it's going to help you guys to improve improve your process streamline your process so it's going to help a lot all right so um the second one second one here is the stone trees this oops this the stone path um and i'm gonna show you how i made that um just after we talk about the layers here so um this one it's a little heavy i had to like uh, scatter a lot of uh, different uh, stones around this path here and also i put some around the scene um then like i place these leaves um on the scene as well and as you can see um it's only surrounding this area over here and the reason that is because i just painted uh, this area uh for the leaves um here on the trees uh i have done something different let me show you so i'm gonna uh open up the um, outliner over here and okay so here i have like some lines that i have um used to establish um the limit where the tree is going to to achieve so these lines over here let me show you if i move them they are going to create more trees for me so this is pretty cool 
uh, and you can do that using this guy over here. Let me show you distribution here, busier area. So you draw a line here and you select the busier here, the line, and then um, you are like good to go. You, you can like work with um, different kind of shapes to, to establish different uh, areas of um, of objects that you're going to populate. Let's uh, move on here and see. Uh, we talked about the, the leaves, right? So these leaves, I got them from Quixel. Uh, let me show you the ones. I'm going to open this up. Quixel also, it's a good, um, it's a good tool for exteriors, interiors as well, but exteriors, especially exteriors. They have a lot of different um different stuffs over there so um let me see if i can find some here um it was some kind of um it was some kind of these these ones here so i'm not quite sure which one i use all right um Let's move on to see the next one here. Uh, also, the grass. Um, I took some from Quixel, and I um, I had some some grasses I I have used in the past that I have created as well. So actually, I I, I think I have like two kind of grasses here um, with different uh, tones different colors and the same thing like applies here like i have used a map and painted the map around here i'm gonna show you how i made that let me see just these ones so, okay so here is a, as you can see you have like this this line that uh established the area uh, where this tree is going to be and okay another trees so basically that's it um and also I have like these two trees over here that's just placed um, strategically. And then the terrain, I actually have like used sculpture to sculpt this, this path over here. And the stones I got from Quixel as well, just placed it uh, strategically as well. And basically that's it. Let me show you... Um, the, um, the way you can create uh, painting masks for scatter your object. Okay, guys, so here, basically what I have is a top view screenshot. Actually, it's a render. I just render a top view image. So as you can see, it's the same, um, the same view from this image over here. And basically, uh, what you can do here is just paint what we want to scatter uh, with the scatter add-on. So, for example, let's um, paint some something here. Um, as you can see, this image also it's in high resolution. I render it in 10K, and just to be easier to paint uh around the house so i have more definition to to do that okay so let me switch here to black and you can start painting uh around here right so just to demonstrate what we can do and one of the benefits to painting using uh photoshop instead of uh using blender because in blender you can do that as well but in photoshop you can uh, we can be a little bit more precise uh, with colors, all right? So it can change here to a medium, medium gray, something like this. And we can have like more details um, using it. So let me switch to white. Let me change opacity a little bit here and let's do something like this. Okay, so basically, uh, 
what these colors means is uh, black means um, full scattered and white means uh, no scattering. So all the black areas is going to be full of objects and white areas is going to be empty. Okay, so this is like um, the best way to, to do that, uh, especially if you like if you want to paint, uh, not just like in this in this demonstration, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you uh, the stones, but you can paint any kind of vegetation, so it's easier to control it. Okay, so I'm gonna save this file just as a test. So let me save a test one here. I'm gonna switch to oops. Let me uh, save it as a JPEG. So Ctrl Alt S actually give us the possibility to save uh, another format. So I'm gonna save in JPEG, uh, test one, and save. So okay, so okay, and let's go back to Blender. Here um, on the texture properties, we can add a new texture and i'm gonna open my texture that is test two oops test one open image here we go and then let's turn on the stone uh, the stones here stones house okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change here on the cutting masks. I'm gonna change to test test one, and here we go. As you can see, uh, we have exactly what we painted. So let's render it and see how it looks. Okay, and here we go. So as you can see, uh, we have this um this stone um, only in the areas that we painted. So this is pretty cool. Uh, and you can do guys, um, as you can see, the sky is the limit. So uh, you can do whatever you want using this technique. Okay. So um, this is pretty cool. I really like this, um, this workflow. So especially to have a more realistic, um, look on my renders so another point um i think that's important to mention about this uh this scene is that i didn't uh use high resolution for all the objects uh in this scene because the idea here was just to uh have a fast render of course but not um, use this, uh, this scene for close-ups. So in my mind, when I start working on this, uh, the idea was, okay, I'm going to build this, um, this scene with like this, this house in the middle, uh, a lot of uh, trees around it, and I'm not gonna uh, make any close-ups. So that's why, uh, in this particular uh, scene, I didn't, I didn't uh, use high resolution textures for my objects. So this is important also to achieve uh, faster results on your renders. Okay, so of course, if you, if I, for some reason, I decide to, let's say, uh, make a close up render um, around, I don't know, the trees, uh or even like close to the house or something like that um i would like change the the resolutions of of the textures that uh i use in this house in these leaves uh in the bark so this is something to keep in mind also i wouldn't change anything like around the house like the trees that are surrounding the house because those um those trees are too far away from camera. So when you have like objects that are far away from the camera, um, you don't need to use high resolution for, for that. So I see that a lot of people have like issues uh, rendering um, scenes like that with like a lot of 
um, objects and one point is don't use high resolutions in objects that are far away from camera so this is important also um, try to use as much as possible uh, the scatter uh, add on you don't need to use this one but uh, I know that there are a lot of different um, add-ons to scatter um, to scatter objects uh, in your scene but use some of um, any kind of add-on that uh, duplicate, the, uh, duplicate the objects as an instance. So this is important. As you can see here, I have like some rocks and all those rocks are cloned, are duplicated by instance. And when you duplicate something by instance in Octane, uh, it means that Octane is not going to calculate uh, the object that you instance. Okay. This is important to achieve faster renders as well, so keep it in mind, okay? So, let's take a look uh, again, let me see if I can, I, okay, so, um, I just wondering if I, if I have anything else to say about it, but I think I don't have, so let's, um, let's take a look here on, uh, on the HDRI, I'm using HDRI from the 3D Collective and also to achieve this like foggy mood, I use this uh, volume median connect to the texture environment in the median slot. So uh, this helped me to achieve the result. Let me show you. So as you can see here, we have this kind of like foggy on, on the trees and this foggy is coming from uh, this this node over here okay so this is the um, the preset i used but of course uh it you always depend on your scene how big it is because all these parameters are related uh to scale so this is important to keep the right scale on your scenes on your objects uh every time you're working uh with blender octane or any kind of projects you are working on so it's good to keep the consistent of uh, your image. Your client's gonna love it. Um, also, guys, let's take a look here on the presets. So as we are working with um, exteriors here, um, we don't need to increase these values um, over here. Okay, so max uh, diffuse depth, max glossy depth, and max scatter depth. So as you can see, those values like I, I kept it uh, as the standard, so 888. Eight. Uh, also, the GI clamp, I kept it 1, and the max samples, I rendered it with uh, 500 samples, uh, the final image. Okay, so again, uh, it took me 5 minutes to render it. Um, also, uh, I turn on the AI light. Uh, just for these uh, lights over here to render a little bit faster because um as we have here a lot of like grass um it helps to calculate uh this area over here a little bit faster so that's why i turn this on and let me see adaptive sampling i always use uh, no matter what so this is important i have recorded a video talking about this this is very important to achieve faster results and knowing how to control it it's super super important so keep it in mind and watch the video that i record it's going it's going to be easier to uh, to understand okay and another thing is octane out of core so as i have like a lot of tons of um of geometries uh faces um it's important to keep this on so usually i use uh 4k uh of the the memory of my computer uh but as this this scene is a little bigger i increase this a little bit more but don't um you don't need to actually to increase this um too much as i increase um around like 8k for scenes like that if it's i think it's more than than enough i have a lot of memory so i don't i don't care like to increase it more than more than than 8k um but if you don't have like too much memory so 
you don't need to worry like 4k 8k it's, it's enough to to load these kind of scenes okay so also this is important if you like i don't know if you have already heard about that but if you're having uh, issues to load scenes uh turn this on right so this is gonna help you to load these kind of scenes okay so especially if you don't have like a gpu uh with a lot of memory so this is how this helps a lot and last thing that we're gonna talk here is um my camera let me show you here so i use this um preview mode here uh that is actually overriding the camera the parameters of my camera and i'm just using um the parameters over here it's easier to control things you don't need to like all the time select the camera go to the camera then go to the to the properties scroll down it's so it's easier uh to override uh, everything from camera and use the parameters over here okay so exposure like 1.5 this is doesn't matter here it's uh, of course you're not going to use it uh not you're not going to copy the same scene uh and you if you are working with your own scenes uh exposure you always change because every scene is different so this is something to keep in mind but one thing here that's important i'm using a lookup table uh here and also uh i turn on the um, ai the noiser that's uh very helpful and helped to achieve this five minutes uh render okay so um basically that's it guys um i don't have much to to say about that uh it's actually it was pretty easy to create this this scene as you can see um there are not too many um too many things that i i did um that's it guys um let me know if you have any questions regarding this scene uh if i i don't know um miss anything uh let me know uh i'd be glad to answer any any questions about it okay so thank you so much and see you in the next video